Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a poem which has appeared in a past A-level examination paper, in fact 2009. It's called Out of Danger by the poet James Fenton. Now the title already raises a couple of interesting questions which the poem will pursue and the poem will take up as its subject matter. Who or what is out of danger? What does out of danger mean? What is the danger that this something or somebody is now out of? So, every time we look at a poem, a good way to start, a good way to probe into the poem is to look at its title. So the title already then raises certain expectations about what this poem is going to be about. But note the first word of the poem is heart. So immediately we know we're going to deal with a poem about the emotions, about love. Out of danger, what does love and danger have in common? What kind of relationship do they share? So the poem begins, heart be kind and sign the release as the trees their loss approve. So it's an invocation already to the emotions, to the heart. Heart now be kind and sign the release. It seems this idea of relationships, this idea of love is being figured as a kind of bond which now must be released, which now the heart must sign away. So love out of love this attention the poem starts to play upon as the trees their loss approve. Immediately, Fenton draws a contrast between the human world of relationships, the human world of love, and the natural world. So the poet wants to sign a release out of this emotion of love just as the trees their loss approve. Loss Transience is, of course, one of the major themes in literature, in poetry. So when the human world is compared to the natural world, the natural world seems to be a lot more accepting of loss of transience, which is, of course, the case because the natural world is emotionless. So loss, so coping with the loss, so transience, so temporariness comes as easily, as naturally as the state of falling leaves. But this is something the poet wants to learn. Of course, the heart, the powerful seed of the emotions, we can't really sign away that loss of love as easily as the leaves fall, for example, in autumn. Another contradiction here is, of course, the difference between the passage of human time, which is linear, which goes in one direction, which, of course, by implication means that permanent loss is irretrievable, it's irrevocable. It stays with you. It can't go away. Unlike spring, summer, autumn, winter, the cycles of nature that keeps on renewing themselves. So the contrast between the human world and the natural world and the poet's yearning to accept loss, to move on, to cope with this loss of love as easily, as naturally as the trees and the loss of their leaves. This goes on into the third line. Learn as leaves must learn to fall out of danger, out of love. It's something unnatural. The poet perhaps is not used to this idea of coming to terms with loss. So the word learn is repeated twice in the same line. It almost becomes a kind of refrain. The poet is almost willing to drum it into his memory, his consciousness learn as leaves, must learn to fall out of danger, out of love. Look at the patterning of the last line, of the first stanza, out of danger, comma, out of love. So the phrasing of the line seems to equate love with a sort of danger, love with a sort of risk. Of course, we can't experience any powerful emotion, an emotion, of course, as strong as love, without the risk, without the danger of loss, without the danger of regret. This is what makes us human, of course. And so the poet, in coping with this loss of love, turns towards nature for a sort of lesson about approving the loss of the leaves. But still, it is a lesson, it is something that the poet tries to accept, the poet tries to work through. Second stanza, what belongs to frost and thaw, sullen winter will not harm. 
the poet is continuing his exploration of nature and the season of winter. Of course, winter, the season of cold, the season of lovelessness, the season of harshness. Now, what belongs to frost and thaw? Frost and thaw, of course, are native elements to winter. So what belongs to something as cold, as emotionless, as barren as winter? Winter will not harm. You can see the obvious analogy. When the poet says to himself, be emotionless, be accepting, be as cold as the winter, maybe then loss won't hurt the poet as strongly as deeply. What belongs to wind and rain is out of danger from the storm. Of course, turbulence that the storm represents, the wind and the rain is native to the storm. So the poet pursues this idea that what is elemental in nature is this emotionless acceptance, emotionless treatment of loss, encapsulated in winter, encapsulated in the storm, which blows, which destroys, which tears down without, of course, any emotion, without any regret, without any emotional baggage. So what belongs to wind and rain? What is as merciless, we might say, what is as destructive as the storm is, will not feel the pain of hurt, the pain of the loss of love. Jealous passion, the third stanza continues, cruel need, betray the heart they feed upon. So now the poet turns back the world of human emotion. But human emotion in terms of its words, negative aspects. Jealous passion, cruel need. They betray the heart they feed upon. It's a different relationship that the frost and the thaw has to the winter, that the wind and the rain has to the storm. It's an emotional laden few lines. Passion and need betray the heart they feed upon. So even, even when strong passion, even when strong need feed the heart, they also betray it. Love gives passion its intensity. Love gives need its strong baggage. But these passions will betray the heart. These passions will hurt you emotionally. But what belongs to earth and death is out of danger from the sun. So the poet in the third stanza brings together the world of nature and the world of the, the human emotion to again drum home the point. Once again, what belongs to earth? What belongs to nature? What belongs to death? What belongs to something that will fade away naturally, something that will disappear naturally is out of danger from the sun, is out of danger from change, is out of danger from weakening, is out of danger from sustaining a great deal of impact that perhaps the sun represents. So passion, need versus earth and death. The poet has, by this time of the poem, made his point very clear. I was cruel, I was wrong, hard to say and hard to know. The fourth stanza shifts. How do we know the entrance of pronouns? I, you. Immediately, the themes that are talked about in the first three stanzas, they are given a sort of personal touch. Now the poem enters into more personal, into more emotional terrain. I was cruel, I was wrong. The poet perhaps reflects on a past relationship that is gone, that has faded away. Was I cruel? Was I wrong? I can't say and I can't know. You do not belong to me now. You are out of danger now. The poet says his lover is out of danger. Why? Because his beloved is away from him now. So that coming to terms with the loss is something the poet struggles with. Now, read the tone of the poem. Has the poet really, by this stage of the poem, come to a complete acceptance of the loss, come to a complete embrace of 
what he's been trying to tell himself in the first three stanzas of the poem. After all, since we must make our emotions to be out of danger, something that doesn't affect us. You are out of danger now. The last stanza drums home the point through a series of repetitions that almost becomes a kind of refrain. Out of danger from the wind. Out of danger from the wave. Out of danger from the heart. You are out of danger now. My idea of you cannot suffer any change. I must make myself feel as cold, as emotionless. So therefore, these powerful stirrings of emotion can't come back to hurt me, can't come back to harm me. So read the emotional tone of the last stanza. Out of danger, out of danger, out of danger. Is the poet losing control? Is the poet coming to a sort of acceptance? The tone is ambiguous. Does the poet drum home the point so many times throughout the poem because he's losing control, because he's losing the ability to cope, because he is not able to listen to his own advice? Or is the last stanza a culmination of the images of the themes of the poem so far? Out of danger from the wind, out of danger from the wave, out of danger from the heart, as if this line punctuates the point. The wind can hurt you. The wind can destroy. The wave similarly can topple. The wave similarly can destroy. Out of danger from the heart, the seat of powerful emotions. Therefore, the poem concludes, falling, falling out of love. The repetition of the word falling. Falling out of love is of course, what we always say, right? I've fallen out of love. I feel sad. I feel dejected because I've been, because my relationship ended because I have fallen out of love. So that reality of heartbreak, that reality of loss now becomes the last line of the poem. But as a kind of summation point of the poem, it raises a few questions. Once again, has the poet really come to terms with this falling out of love? Will the poet ever want to enter another relationship? And more importantly, what do relationships mean if we don't approach them with strong attachments, with powerful feelings? Is it better to love indifferently, if there is such a word, or is it better to love with all your heart and to suffer that powerful, strong, depressing feeling of heartbreak. So once again, the poem refuses to provide an answer. Once again, the poem shows us that the answers to these questions are not simplistic at all. Poetry is thus this embracing of complexity, this seeing human relationships as multifaceted, as complicated, as ambiguous, as two-sided. A good poem doesn't reduce its answers. A good poem rarely provides a simplistic, a reductive solution to the questions it raises. All it wants is to get us to think. And of course, I think in this day and age, we need more of thinking. This has been How to Read a Poem. Thank you.